everybody. Well, hello, thank you so much for turning out, and I've brought the rain with me. I've been to Hay, this is my third time to Hay now, and apparently it is sunny and lovely sometimes, just not when I'm here. <laughs> so thank you so much for coming this morning. It's great to see so many people here. And can I just do a double check? You've all been given a piece of paper and a pencil. Has anyone not, have you got anyone who hasn't got a pa pa piece of paper that would like to do some drawing? Can you put your hand up if you haven't got a piece of paper? Because maybe if there are any spare sheets, so we've got some spare sheets of paper and maybe a few pencils. And if you haven't got a pencil, if somebody else has got a spare pencil next to you, maybe you could borrow one. It'd be great. So I'm going to get, so if you thought this morning that you're all going to turn up here and you were going to have a nice, lovely, relaxing morning and I was going to do all the work, well, you've got another thing coming because I'm going to get you to do some drawing and doodling. Are you up for doing that? Hooray! Right answer. <laughs> so if you don't know what I do, I am Liz Pichon, the author and the illustrator. That means double the work. Um, and I write about a character called Tom Gates. So what I'm going to show you first this morning is a little video, and it's a little bit about the characters. So if you don't know anything about the family, or any, so this gives you a little bit of idea of the kind of things that Tom gets up to. Here we go. Oh, with sound, hopefully. Okay, let's play it again. Oh, here we go. Pleased to see me, I can tell. Get lost, Tom. My grandparents, or the fossils, as I call them, are always jolly and happy. Go, go, go. Whoa! Granny Mavis likes cooking very odd combinations of food. Here's her vegetable cake. Luckily, I'm not that hungry. No thanks, Granny. But her vegetable cake has given me another idea for a doodle. Tomato splodge monster. What monster? I'm Tom Gates. Welcome to my brilliant world. So there you go. There's a little little insight into the world of Tom. Oh, that's a bit old now. That book's out already. Here we go. So that's the kind of thing that Tom gets up to. And here he is, here's Tom, and when I was writing him, I kind of imagined he was about a nine or ten-year-old boy. And he's not really naughty, he's what I call just a little bit pesky. And he gets very easily distracted in class by things like drawing and doodling, a bit like I used to. And he's also very keen on something called caramel wafers. Anyone here like, like a caramel wafer? Do you know, I'm sure that Tunnock's wafers must have... <laughs> Can I just say, I do put bananas and fruit in the book as well, just to sort of balance it out. But one of the things that Tom likes to do, he loves playing the caramel wafer biscuit trick. And I don't know if any of you have tried that trick, but if you don't know how to do it, this is what you do, okay? You unwrap the wafer really carefully, and then the best bit is you eat the wafer, and then you wrap it back up, and you leave the wafer on the plate for some poor, unsuspecting person to come along. And then they go and look at it, and they see the biscuit, and they go, oh, yum, look, there's a wafer. And they go to take it, and what's inside? Nothing. How annoying would that be? So that's the kind of thing that Tom gets up to. And because I take my work very seriously, I have actually eaten wafers on your behalf. 
So here we go. Which wafer is the real one? So one of these is empty, and one of these is the real wafer. So hands up if you think it's wafer A that's the real wafer. Quite a few of you there. Hands up if you think it's wafer B. OK, I don't know if we can have a drum roll. Do you want a drum roll? Yay, OK, drum roll, and it's... It's B! <laughs> Hooray! <laughs> Who knew that wafers could be so much fun? Here we go. Ah, oh, three of them now. Honestly, when I was doing this, my husband came in and saw me lining them up, eating wafers. I'm going, it's work, really? <laughs> so this is A, B, or C. OK, so now you're looking for the empty wafer. So hands up if you think it's wafer A that's empty. Have a look. Hands up for B. And hands up for C. OK, we'll have another drum roll. And it's B! <laughs> we could just do this for the whole time, couldn't we? <laughs> we have got one more. Here we go. So here we go. Empty wafer again. Hands up for A. Just a few of you there. Hands up for B. And hands up for C. Oh, this is getting too easy. <laughs> OK, another drum roll. And we'll... It's C! Hooray! So I'm really sorry, parents, but you're going to go home now, and everyone else, they're going to be trying that trick. And I have to say, it does work really well with club biscuits as well. <laughs> so that's the kind of thing that Tom gets up to. Here's Frank and Rita Gates. This is Tom's mum and dad, and they are first place in embarrassing parents. Anyone here got embarrassing parents or mums and dads? They're all the children. <laughs> Listen, if my, if my kids were here, they'd be putting their hands up too. So there they are. There's Tom's mum giving him a great big hug right in front of his friends when he probably doesn't want to be hugged. And as you can see, Tom's mum and dad doing very embarrassing mum and dad dancing there and wearing embarrassing outfits too. Well, quite often, children often ask me, where do you get your ideas from? And if you've read the first book, you might recognise Tom's dad. There he is. And Tom's dad comes to pick him up from school, and he's dressed exactly like that, and he's got mud all over his wellies. Mind you, that's the going rate right in hay, isn't it? <laughs> that doesn't look, look unusual. But if you imagine that you're at school, and your dad comes to pick you up, and he's got a bobble hat on, and instead of a belt round his waist, what's he got? He's got a piece of string. Well, I'll let you into a secret. Yes, you've guessed it. This actually happened to me. So my dad came to pick me up, and I'd been on a school journey, and I was on the coach coming back, and you know what it's like? You're thinking, great, you've had a great time, and the coach is coming back, and it goes past, and it goes past, and there's your parents and your friends that are sort of waiting to pick you up, and two friends of mine sitting in front of me, they looked out of the window, and they went, oh, shame, who's that old tramp over there? <laughs> and yes, it was my dad. <laughs> and he came exactly dressed like that, straight from the allotment, with a bit of string and everything, wearing that bobble hat. And I'd forgotten how much that bobble hat must have actually got into my head and used to really bug me when I was little. And I found this the other day, and I thought I'd put this in. This is a Father's Day card that I made for my dad. I think I was about eight or something. This is a wise owl. This owl is not so wise. It takes after you. <laughs> And I, and I drew him wearing a bobble hat and his uh, allotment gear. <laughs> and if you don't believe me, I have actually got visual evidence. Da -da, there we are, there's my dad. <laughs> wearing that bobble hat he used to wear it all the time. And there he is. He is actually dressed as a tramp there. But those trousers, I can promise you, he used to wear those all the time and with that tie and a piece of string around his waist. So now you know that some of the things that I write about in Tom Gates, actually quite a lot of them, are actually things that have really happened to me. So that's Tom's dad. And, my dad. and this is Delia. Anyone here got grumpy teenagers, brothers and sisters, or know any? <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, everyone's hands go, yeah, yeah. So you'll understand sometimes why I was the youngest of four as well. So I, my sister was definitely a bit like Delia. And I've got three kids myself. And so, you know, we've, we've done the teenage stuff. So whenever I draw Delia, I always draw her with a little cloud over her head. That's Delia. And we've got... There we are. There's Delia in the morning, obviously, because she's very delightful and happy. So and this is Delia. She goes through all the emotions. And this is Delia in the evening. There we are. <laughs> Just a little bit grumpier, that's all. 
That's probably Dina. And also, Tom is in a band. And his band, who knows who, what the band's called? Does anyone know? Yeah, it's <laughs> Dog Zombies. Now, if you're trying to work out what to call your band, Tom and Derek just decided they really like dogs and they really like zombies, so they put the two names together, called it Dog Zombies. And they write a song, just to annoy Delia as well, called Delia's a Weirdo. And the song goes, Delia, she's a weirdo. Delia, she's a geek. Delia, she's a weirdo. Delia, she's a free. <laughs> so can you, you almost feel sorry for Delia. She's got a little brother, and her, his mate, you know, going around the house singing this song. And he also likes to draw her. He likes to draw monsters and things as well. So I thought we'd play here. What do you reckon? Do you think Tom's drawn Delia, or think she's drawn like a monster freak? Hands up for Delia. Hands up for a monster freak. Oh, about 50-50. We could do another drum roll for this. Are you ready? It's... Aha! It's kind of both. That's Delia in the morning without her sunglasses. Have a look. What do you reckon? Do you think it's Delia? Hands up for Delia. Hands up for a monster freak. Lots of you here. OK, another, another drum roll. So your hands are going to... And it's... OK. <laughs> Hooray! <laughs> it's great. Now, I hope you're remembering what kind of monsters and creatures, because I'm gonna, you're going to get me to draw one of these in a minute, so we want lots of ideas. So this is to give you some ideas as well. And in the new book, there are lots of bugs and really disgusting food as well. And the bugs and creatures are everywhere. So what do you reckon? When you look at that, do you think it looks yum? Or do you think it looks yuck? So hands up for yum! Hands up for yuck. Ugh. OK, we'll have a look. I don't want to wear your hands out. If you don't want to do a drum roll, you don't have to. It's quite good, though. Come on, listen. <laughs> Ready? It's... Ta-da! <laughs> so if you thought it was a cake, you've got to watch for that, haven't you? And we'll do another couple here. OK, so what do you think? Hands up for yum. Is it something lovely and delicious? Or something yuck and disgusting. All right, OK, let's have a look. We'll see it's... Aha! <laughs> it's a monster, but eating a wafer. So it's two things, really. And a couple more of these. OK, what do you think? It could be. It looks disgusting. So it could be disgusting. Hands up for yuck. Hands up for yum. All right, we'll have a look. It's... Yum! <laughs> So I was quite proud of that one. It took me ages to work out how to make it look disgusting. <laughs> so there we are. And last but not least, so if you know the books, you might recognize this. <laughs> so hands up if you think it's yummy. Hands up if you think it's yuck. OK, last one. It's a drum roll. Let's make it a good one. It's... There you go. So it's Granny Mavis with her fish biscuits. Now, Granny Mavis is slightly eccentric. Um, I'm very fond of the fossils, but she does like to do a bit of odd combinations of food and cooking. So one of her specialities is, this is Granny Mavis, the fossils. And anyone know why you call them the fossils? Got any ideas? Because they're very old and ancient. But really, they're not really old and ancient, but they might be because they're actually very sprightly. And especially Man Granny Mavis, as I said, she's slightly eccentric. And Granny Mavis likes to do, there we are, she's putting her tea on her cornflakes because she thinks it saves time. Another speciality is chocolate sauce on chips. Anyone fancy that? Yeah. <laughs> There's always some kind of, oh yeah, that sounds lovely. Or how about a cherry tomato, but on a cake? No. Pear and onion soup? Hmm. <laughs> and there's Granny Mavis' speciality. She makes fruit pizzas. And does anyone remember what Granny Mavis puts on Tom's pizza in the lunchbox? Does anyone remember? Yeah, do you remember that? Oh, he, she, that's right. She makes it in the shape of her face. But she, can you remember? Yeah, you can remember? Let's have a look, shall we? Yeah, it's... That's right, there we are. Granny Mavis puts a banana on Tom's pizza. And there's Granddad Bob, and he likes to take his teeth out and snap them around. And lastly, here's Mr. Fullerman. And as you know, Mr. Fullerman has got big, beady eyes. 
And the reason he has that is because he has to spot when Tom's drawing and doodling. And also because even when he's got his back turned to the classroom, he knows exactly what is going on everywhere. So this is the part here. Now, you don't have to do any drawing. This is the bit where you, you get me to do some drawing. And we're going to have a game of something. It's like a game of consequences. So what I'm going to do is draw a head and a body. Um, but I'm just going to concentrate on the head and shoulders first. And there's some people there with some microphones. And you've got to give me the ideas of what we're going to draw. So just think about those monsters that we saw. And this is where we can swap over. I was meant to give a... <laughs> If you can swap over here so you can see the screen, what I'm drawing, that would be great. So who's got any ideas? As people go around, you put your hand up and think about the head and how many eyes, what's on top of its head. Maybe we'll just do the top half, and then we're going to fold it over and then do the, the middle bit. So anybody got any ideas? We're going to get some microphones. We'll walk around. Yep. What kind of head should we draw? Um, it has four eyes. Four eyes. We've got four eyes. I'm going to take one down here. Yep. Two more eyes and four eyes. We've got four. OK, so we've got four eyes. So we need a shape head and maybe a neck of some kind. What kind of shape head shall we draw? Yep. A squid head. A squid. <laughs> a squid head. OK, so, let's, so while you're coming up with the ideas, I'll draw. So we've got... So if we do it like that... So we've got a squid head and we've got... We have four eyes, but let's make two of them up here. Like that. And another one there. So this is your monster. So you can make up. So let's draw. I'm going to draw circular eyes. But obviously, we can do other shapes there. Let's do that. All right, what else are we going to draw then? We need some more, more ideas. We need necks and hair. Anyone, anyone at the back? or? Yeah. A neck with arms. A neck with arms. <laughs> OK. All right. One, two. Teeth. Two pairs of teeth. Well, what sort of shape mouth? What, should, what kind of mouth should we draw? Anyone else? So we've got a mouth. What kind of mouth? A spiky mouth. A spiky mouth. Excellent. So we've got like a spiky mouth like that. And let's do some sharp teeth then as well. All right. And then we've got a neck there with arms on it. And let's give him holding a caramel wafer, shall we? Like that. Right, what else have we got? Any other ideas? We need some shoulders. Anything on the top of the head? Three tongues. Some, how many tongues? Three. Three. <laughs> okay. All right. Let's do three. One there. So we've got three tongues. All right. Uh, let's do another one there. All right. Anything else? We need some shoulders. Anything on the top of its head? How are we? Legs on the shoulders. Legs on the shoulders, OK. So what sort of shape shoulders should we do? Anyone else got any ideas? Star, right. star shapes, sh Let, shoulders. OK, we'll do some spiky shoulders then. So if I do them like that. There we are. We've got spiky shoulders and a random foot <laughs> coming out. That where we were with a... Slightly smelly as well. <laughs> and another one there. Two. Wait for a minute. <laughs> okay, right. Anything else? I'll take one more thing on the head and shoulders. Could you make him wear a crown? A crown. Excellent. <laughs> there we are. So we've got crowned monster. There we are. There. Lovely. And just for good measure... I'm going to give him a bow tie, <laughs> like that. So he's got a little bow tie on. OK, so we're all happy with that? Excellent. Right, you'll get the idea of it now. So maybe a few hairs as well. <laughs> so what I'm going to do now is this is the bit where we fold the drawing down. So while I'm doing that, maybe you can have a think about what kind of body and what kind of arms we're going to give the monster. So I'm trying to fold it so I don't... Oh, don't rip the drawing, and then we fold it over, and then we start. There we go. Right, let's get some ideas. Who's got any ideas? What kind of body? What kind of arms? So this is the bit we do now. So you forget about the top bit. Right, who else has got some ideas? You can have a long 
long body. A long body, okay. Anything else? Banana arms. Banana arms. Right, a long body. Do we want, before I draw the body, there's, we've got banana arms. All right, so if we draw, so it's going to be very long, let's. There we go. Um, yeah. Bumps around the edge of the body. Bumps around the edge of the body. So we've got banana arms like that. No, of course. There we are. So that's a sort of banana. And bumps like that. So it's got sort of a bumpy body. And maybe, there we are, he's got some, maybe he's got some pants on as well. So I can give him a, like that. But we won't draw the legs yet. I'm just adding them in with some flowers on. Anyone else got any ideas? Caramel wafer tummy. A caramel wafer tummy. Right, let's draw. Okay. I'm sorry, everyone, if I'm in, I feel like I'm indoctrinating people to caramel wafers. <laughs> but they are quite good. <laughs> there we are. Right, anything else that we want to add? Rugby ball-shaped legs. Rugby, oh, okay, so save the legs. Anything more up here first before we could go? He, could he have a mouth on his tummy? A mouth on his tummy? Hang on, let's just do it up here then. Here we are. So he's got a nice smiley mouth. That Oh, look, listen to the rain. Oh. <laughs> Anyone else? So I'm making these guys go all over the place. <laughs> Three got? bodies? Three, oh, well, we're going to... I think we're going to have to... Just anything up here, what can I fit on there? Anyone got any ideas that I could fit on there? Let me just take one down here so you don't get left out here. Yeah. Yes. Uh, hairy ears sticking out of his chest. Hairy ears sticking out of its chest. Well, how about we do them here, like that? So we do little ears here. There we are, with a bit of hair. There, one there. Like that. And how about, I'm going to, it's a bit odd, this one. I'm going to give it a medallion. Why not? <laughs> right, excellent. So we've got this very strange monster wearing flowery pants, banana hands, lumpy body. So now, let's turn this down. And last but not least... It's the legs and the feet. So if you haven't had a go, see if we can come up with some great rugby ideas for the feet. Rugby ball legs. Rugby ball legs. How about I do a rugby ball foot? I'll fit it in the drawing somewhere. And I'm just going to take one down here. So here, yep. Barber shop hat feet. Barber shop hat feet. OK, I don't know what that is. <laughs> for like a barber shop, is that like a little sort of, you know, straw hat? Okay, I'll add that. so we've got one yeah. rugby ball, one barber shop for you. And how about somebody in the middle there? Yeah, you in the middle, yeah. Some. Can you shout that? I still can't hear. Ladder, ladder legs. Okay, well, let's see. that's a good one. So let's draw one ladder leg like that. There we go. Let's try and drown out that, that rain. <laughs> So we've got one ladder leg, like this. And then we've got, what was it, a barber shop foot? A barber shop hat. I'm sorry if I'm not quite getting the barber shop hat, but we'll just draw a hat there, like that. Yeah. And then we need another leg. Anyone got any idea for another leg? Yep. Jelly legs. Jelly legs. OK. Let's do sort of slightly wobbly. You have to kind of imagine that they're made out of jelly, like this. And there was a rugby ball foot, wasn't it? I don't know, is that a rugby ball? It's kind of like a rugby ball, isn't it? And as it's a jelly, let's put like a, a spoon in it. And maybe a wafer too, here we are. <laughs> so it's got a wafer. Right, I'm sure we can fit a couple more things on there. Bunnies on the jelly. Some what? Bunnies on the jelly. Bodies on Bunnies. the jelly. Rabbits, bunnies. Like that. Bunnies! <laughs> There's me going, I'm trying to make sense of it, like that makes sense. Bunnies, of course. Why wouldn't you have a bunny? Elephant trunk coming out of its knee. 
an elephant trunk coming out of its knee, okay? There's a little bunny there. And another one here. <laughs> there we are. Roller skates. Oh, what was that? Roller skates. Roller skates. Okay, there's another bunny there. Going. Tomat no. Tomat oh, hang on, hang on. Toes. Right, I've got. Here we are. What's a. Let's do it. <laughs> so that's a kind of like a trunk. There we are. An elephant trunk. And we had. Oh, what was the other one? Tomat Roller toes. skates. Right, okay, let's draw some on the hat then. We'll draw some roller skates. A bubble hat on the trunk. Oh, I can't keep up now. Hang on. That was a, a hat. A bubble hat on a trunk. A bubble hat on the trunk. There. <laughs> Excellent. Tomato toes. Tomato toes. <laughs> All right. <laughs> okay, now you've really warmed up now, haven't you? Here we are. Here we are. Tomato toes. Right, I think we've probably almost... If anyone's got one more, let's add one more thing then. Um, snake heads. Snake heads. Oh, how about, of course, well, we've got a ladder, so let's add a snake in, shall we? There Four we guys go. on the toes. Hang on, let's draw a snake like that. <laughs> With a tongue. We've got a little snake. And somebody, somebody eyes. What was that? I missed that. Four guys. Four on guys the on the... Legs. Legs. On the legs, okay. <laughs> right, well, let's actually, frog eyes. There we are. Frog eyes. Okay, brilliant. Now, I think, are you ready to see your monster then? I don't think I can actually fit anything else on there. <laughs> there we are. Or maybe there we are. There's some mud. <laughs> right, excellent. Well done. So this is the bit now when we have the big reveal. So are you ready to see your monster? Okay, now we need a drum roll, and I'll bring it down so you can... Ta-da! It's... Hooray! There you go. Here. So well done! Give yourselves a round of applause. That's pretty good for that time of the morning. Well done. Fantastic. <laughs> and I always say to kids, actually, that actually, if you want to make up a creature or do some sort of wake, really unusual monster, it's a really good idea, a way to come up with it. You can imagine a story about that, couldn't you? Excellent. So well done, everybody. There we are. Yeah, I had to work this morning. <laughs> so now I'm going to read you a little bit from the latest book. So we just need to switch back. Brilliant, here we are. And this is the latest one, and it's called A Tiny Bit Lucky. And do you think Tom's very lucky? No. no. <laughs> he quite often gets into problems, doesn't he? So this is the cover for A Tiny Bit Lucky. And anyone who knows, if you've read the books, I do all the pages. I write and draw them by hand, first of all. And I put all sorts of little drawings and doodles on the pages. So when I'm reading it, you can read along and see what happens. And I'll set the scene. So Tom's school is having a school inspection, <laughs> so all the teachers are a little bit more stressed than usual. And they're actually going to be making pizzas as well, so the school inspectors always turn up just at the wrong time when they're, you know, the teachers are trying to do something different. And Tom and Derek are walking to school when suddenly Tom remembers something. So he thinks it should be a good week. June has already left for school and is walking ahead of me and Derek. We're too busy laughing about how we redecorated Delia's room to catch up. Ha ha. We're nearly at school when Derek says, I think we're making a short film this week. What, with the whole class? I wonder. Yes, even Mrs. Worthington is going to be in it, Derek tells me. And I say, no close-ups then, which makes Derek laugh. Because Mrs. Worthington, she's got a bit of a moustache going on. And that is actually based on one of my teachers. <laughs> I tell Derek, we're making pizzas. As soon as I say the word pizzas, I suddenly remember I've left my pizza toppings at home. You have enough time to go back and get them if you hurry, Derek says. So that's what I do. I run back home. Luckily, I don't live far away. I open the front door and charge into the kitchen, saying, oh, Mum, cheese, tomatoes, Mum, please. 
Mum's already gone to work, and it looks like Dad's out too, or he's in the shed and can't hear me. So I look in the fridge first. Cheese, cheese, what cheese? There's cheese everywhere. Which one do I choose? Just in case, I take all of them and shove everything into my bag. Then I go to the cupboard to find a tin of tomatoes, and two things happen when I open the door. One, I discover the last tin hidden behind some beans. Good. Two, as I grab it, I knock over a bag of flour. Bad. Which falls in slow motion past my hands, narrowly missing a cup on the side, and lands on the floor, and all the flour spills out everywhere, and I mean everywhere. It's a mess. I try scraping the flour back in the bag with my hands, which sort of works, until I drop it again, and the flour puffs up and goes in my face. There's not enough time to clear up, or I'll be late for school. So I shove the bag back in the cupboard and accidentally tread in a pile of flour at the same time. I forgot my shoes have holes in them. Pushing the flour into the corner of the kitchen makes it look a tiny bit better. There, all done. Now I grab my bag and head to the door, leaving flour footprints as I go. And as I'm walking to school, the flour starts puffing out of the holes in my shoes, and it begins to rain too, which makes me a bit soggy because I've forgotten my coat. Great. When I finally get to school, something's different, and that's where we're going to end it. <laughs> oh, I love a cliffhanger! <laughs> so you'll have to you have to read the rest of the book if you want to find out what happens. Right. So this is the time when you've all got pencils and paper, hopefully, and I'm going to show you first of all.、Uh, this is a sped up drawing of me doing a doodle, and this is what you're going to do. So let's have a watch. Here we go. <laughs> okay, you could all do that, can't you? <laughs> oh yes, you can. <laughs> yeah, it's a bit early for Christmas. No, honestly, I always tell everyone that don't worry. The fantastic thing about this style of drawing and doodling, which Tom does, obviously, which I do, is that actually it doesn't matter if you make a mistake. This is just a style of drawing, and some of you might have noticed already that I don't just draw in books and on paper. Anything, anyone else spotted anything else I might doodle on? Yep. My shoes. This is where I take my shoes off and realise I've got holes in my tights. But no. <laughs> so you can see there. Look, I'm gonna draw my shoes as well. I'll be wearing them later. This is、uh, not very practical for hay, I know. And I'd like to pretend that these are very fancy. And you know, I sent them off to get them handmade by somebody in a place in Paris. But actually, I bought them in a shop. 
Primark, and um, I just drew on them. <laughs> so I'm not encouraging you all to go rushing off and drawing on your shoes. But there you go. So it's a really brilliant style, and it goes all on all different kinds of things. So here we go, then. Let's swap that over so you can see what I'm drawing. And honestly, don't worry about making a mistake. And I'm really going to try and leave... I'm going to leave about 15 minutes at the end to take some questions as well. So if you want to get your piece of paper and start in the middle, like that, and while I'm answering the questions, I'll switch back to the video, and I've got a still, so you can carry on drawing if you want. So the best thing to do is start at the top, and then we're going to draw like an arrow, like that. And honestly, really don't worry about making mistakes. And... I said, this is because it, it looks a lot more complicated than it really is. And it's just about building up your drawing. So I'm going to draw this arrow like that. And I'm going to color it in. And if you don't get a chance to finish your drawing off today, you can always take it back, take it away with you. And then you can add some color and other things like that. So let's do the arrow. So you do an arrow, and then I'm going to draw Tom down here. So if you draw a circle first, like that. Can everybody see over in the corner? Can you see there? Oh, you can. Oh, right. <laughs> I was worried I was in the way. Thank you. So you do a second, and then you draw another circle all the way around, like that. Okay. And then we're going to draw Tom in the middle. This is where I have to daintily squat, and you can hear my knees cracking. <laughs> so Tom, we just draw him as a little circle. And he's got two little ears there, two dots for eyes, and a little nose. And I said, don't worry, if I draw a bit faster than you, then don't panic. It's just because I'm trying to get the drawing done so you can... So we've got some time for some questions. And there we are. There's Tom's flat top hairstyle there. And then these bits here you can color in between. And you'll notice this little symbol is something that appears on all the covers. There we go. Like that. So you've got Tom. And you can write, I could write Tom here in that sort of bubble writing. Or you can write your own name if you want to. So I'm just going to do it quick, like that. So that says Tom. And then you just draw a line all the way around it. So this style is just, it's not about being exact. It's just about building up the line. So that's Tom there. And then let's draw Mr. Fullerman. So Mr. Fullerman, we're going to have him peering in from the side and looking down. So Mr. Fullerman's got, there we are, let's draw him there. And we draw his eyes, obviously, his big beady eyes like that. And he's saying, Tom. There we go, so we've got three little strands of hair. <laughs> so that's me, and we just have him leaning in. So he's got his collar and tie there like that, and we give him a speech bubble. Tom! And a little bit of an arm, there we are, so that's Mr. Fullerman. And I'm going to draw a few stars, and quite often people are like, oh, I'm not sure how to draw stars, so I'll do one really slowly up here. A star is just, you do a little point at the top, and one to the side, like that. One there, and then we'll do two at the bottom. There you go. So just dot a few stars around your drawing. One up there. And maybe, and I was going to save, I'll save that space for a little cat. And if you want to make your stars look like they're shooting out, like they're slightly three-dimensional, so... Just do a little dot if you want, and then you take your lines from the points of the stars, and you just do sort of curved lines like that. So that makes them look like they're shooting out. 
and do it again. So you do a little dot if you want to, and then just do all the lines that just go down. There we are. So that's the stars. And in the, the latest book, there is a cat that appears. But let's draw, I know, let's draw Marcus here. So Marcus is, again, a little circle, two little ears, dots rise, and he's always a bit grumpy. So that's the start of Marcus. There we are. And then he's got his sort of curly hair there. And I'm going to put Marcus in a circle. And that's a nice space we have there. So let's draw one of those sort of very odd monsters that Tom likes to draw. And I'm going to draw it down here. Like that. So you go down. And it's got, you can make up your own monsters if you want. Every time I draw one of these things, they're always different. And they usually have one big eye and one tiny little one and a letterbox mouth. Like that. There we go, with a few hairs on. That's your monster. And you can put a box underneath so you can stand on it. It's quite a good place for you to sign your name there. And last but not least, let's draw one of those little funny bugs there as well. So if you've got a space, and that's going to have two big eyes. There we go. So once you've drawn your drawing, I'm going to draw a square, kind of, so it just boxes it all in, like that. So it's a bit like the cover of a book. So you can see what I mean about it. It doesn't have to be perfect. And the next thing to do, once you've got all the elements of the drawing, so just take your pen and you just draw around, like that. If you just draw around, draw around Mr. Fullerman, like that. Get your monster, you can draw around your monster. And this is the bit, this is my favorite bit. This is where you start linking up all the parts of the drawing. So if you draw a line around all those, and you remember all those little lines that you can see on the books and on the covers, you literally just start doing, there we go, so you just start filling up your drawing just like that. And that's why I say it's a lot more simple than you think it is. It looks very fancy, especially when you finish it all. And if you've got time, it's these bits in between that you can actually add color in. So this is the main book. And you li this is honestly, that's it. That's all you do is you just fill up your drawing, which is why it's very therapeutic. <laughs> so you can add in more stars if you want. Like that, and you just carry on filling up your drawing. There we go. And like that. There we go. And you just keep on doing And you can do straight lines too if you want. So I'm keeping an eye on the. So you've got straight lines and short lines like that. And you just carry on filling it up until your whole page is all covered, like that. So I, I'm going to keep carrying on doing the drawing. There we go. See if I can get this one finished. This. There. And that's all you do. Just carry on doing those drawings, doing those lines. And I could put a bit of color on it as well. There we are. Now, how much time have I got? Like, so while I'm finishing that off, if we swap over... Oh, actually, no, you can leave that so you can see the drawing. What I could do, if we swap over, I've got a still. I've got a still of the, um, the video, and I'll just put that up for the next one. There you go. So you can still see. That's roughly... Now I've realized all the bits that I've missed out. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> So you can carry on copying that. And I'm just wondering if any of you here maybe have got any questions that you'd like to ask me. Anyone got any questions? Yep. Yes. Um, will you create your book into a, a um, 
TV program. Oh, who knows? <laughs> well, it's funny because actually when you write the book, obviously you're just thinking about the books. But um, there, okay, there has been some interest in it, but I really feel it's got to be the right thing. It's got to be, you know, the right kind of characters. And so that's people are talking about it at the moment, but nothing has actually happened as yet. But you never know. Fingers crossed. <laughs> Yeah, anyone else got any questions? Yeah. What were your favourite books when you were little? Oh, my favourite books. I absolutely loved Roald Dahl, and I loved Quentin Blake's drawings. And I think one of my favourite books was The Twits. You like The Twits? Especially when um, Mrs. Twit puts the glass eye in Mr. Twit's beer. <laughs> and it's also because I really like funny books as well. That's one of my favourites. Any questions? Um, were you shocked about the popularity of the books? Well, <laughs> well, looking out into this audience, it's like, oh, it's really, it is amazing. I mean, obviously, if you write something, you really want people to be able to read it and enjoy it. But I honestly, I have so much fun writing the books. And originally, um, I did picture books a lot of the time. And so... When I, Tom Gates actually started off life as a picture book, and then gradually sort of it morphed into a book for older children. So yeah, I was, because I just put things in the books that I think I would have liked as a nine or 10 year old. So the fact that everybody else likes it is brilliant. <laughs> like caramel wafers and paper bangers. Has anyone had a go at making a paper banger? Have you, well, have you used A3 paper? You've got to have the big piece of paper to really make it work. So I am very surprised. Um, what, what inspired you to get your idea of the Tom Gates book? Well, the idea didn't come to me. Like Some people think that you know, an idea will just come to you, ta-da, like that. But I drew a character, and at first, I wanted, I was thinking about making Tom Gates into a picture book. So I know some, when children first start school, they do an all about me book usually, don't they? and it's got things about their friends and their families. Actually, would it be all right just to swap back over again, because I can show you something on the video. Sorry, to go. I'm driving everyone nuts here. <laughs> if you do that, then I can show you. This was actually, here we are, that was an all about me. So that's how Tom Gates started. And there's Mrs. Worthington with her extreme close-up. And it was my school. And then I did a few pages, look, there we are, my scrapbook, all about me. You can see, and that's actually my daughter. That's my husband. <laughs> He'd be delighted that I'm showing you all his baby pictures <laughs> with his dimples there. So I kind of imagined it. And actually, Tom's voice came from that. And I put a lot of things in there. There's another page. There we are. About, so it was supposed to be like a collage, like interesting stuff. And that was a little thing when my daughter was very young. She cut her own hair with play scissors, and she cut the fringe so short, all the children won't remember, but she actually looked like the bass player out of Slade. <laughs> like, really short. So I remembered things like that, and that was the first way Tom Gates came together. And then gradually, I like to show children, because people often think that it doesn't take a while. Then I had to have a couple of goes at it, and then finally, you know, it went to the publishers and it, came, you know, it went to out to the publishers and they said, yeah, we really like it, but we don't think there's enough of a story. So eventually, I actually bought an exercise book. Oh, sorry. <laughs> so I bought an exercise book and I just imagined that Tom was writing in his book. There you are, that's those do drawings and doodles. And that's one of the reasons. And then so I handwrite all the the pages, and this isn't exactly what I sent off to the publishers, but you will probably recognize, if I get to the right page, has anyone here been camping? Okay, and has it rained by any chance? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> there we are, so I was imagining that Tom was writing about his ho holiday that he went camping, so he called it Camping Sucks, and that's in the first book. So I just wrote it by hand. There were some more drawings and doodles, but if you look in the first book, it's pretty much very similar to what this looks like. And then I imagined that he was trying to think of excuses about how to um, get out of doing his homework. So they are. So he throws water on his homework. And right at the very end, you can guess what, what's that homework excuse, do you think? <laughs> the dog ate my homework, yeah. <laughs> So that's what I sent off first. This is a very long-winded answer to your question. So this went out to the publishers, and I got 
It's never happened to me before, because I'd only ever written picture books before. Um, and I got seven offers from seven different publishers. And actually, Sam is here. For, she's my editor from Scholastic. I don't know if she knew that. Where are you, Sam? <laughs> but I got seven offers, and then suddenly I panicked because I'd only ever written 12 pages for a picture book, but I think I have been storing up these ideas in my head, all the different things that happened to me, so all the ideas have been coming out. So I really just write about stuff that have happened in my life. I'm always looking around, and if I see something funny, like the banana doodles and that kind of thing. So does that answer your question? Yay! <laughs> When was your first book published? Well, I published my first picture book. It came out in 2005, and it was called Square-Eyed Pat, and it was about a little dog who used to watch too much TV. And um, I hadn't realised, actually, how much sheds feature in my book, because mum, mum, mum dog decides that the TV's going in the shed because he's watching too much telly. And then later on, of course, they can't find mum. Where is she? In the shed, watching telly. And does anyone know where I work? Anyone know where I work? In a shed, <laughs> yes. So you're getting the picture now. I'm not looking very far for ideas, yeah. When did you um, first realise you wanted to be a writer? That's a really good question, because I actually started off as an illustrator. And when I was younger, when I was little, I just loved drawing, and I loved reading comics, and I absolutely loved Walt Disney and copying things. And I've always made things as well, made little creatures and things like that. So I didn't really think, I didn't even know that you could be an author. And also, I'm a little bit dyslexic, and um, I, I, my spelling was appalling, and my, you know, I wasn't very good at writing, but I had lots of creative ideas, so I never thought about being an author, but because I illustrated other people's books, and people weren't giving me funny books to, to illustrate, so I actually thought, well, if I want to illustrate funny books, I'm going to have to write my own, and that's when I started. So it wasn't really a light bulb, I want to be an author, it was just I thought, I'd really like to illustrate funny books, so I'm just going to have to have a go at writing them myself. So I hope that's encouraging for you. <laughs> Yeah. What's your favourite book? My favourite? What, in the Tom Gates? Well, I have to say, they are a bit like, you know, it's like, it's like picking your favourite child. <laughs> usually my favourite one is the one that I've just finished. So um, it's usually a sense of relief as well. You think, yay, it's finished. So they've all been my favourite books. And as you know, I like to put extra things in them. So all of them have maybe board games and flip books and things to make. Do so you get any inspiration from any of your favourite authors? Do I get any? Well, I have to say, do you remember I said I like Roald Dahl? Well, when I was at art college, and I did graphic design at art college, um, Quentin Blake came to my college. And you know what students are like? We're all a bit blasé. <laughs> but there was a bit of a buzz when Quentin came. Um, and he was so funny, and he showed us all his sketches and showed, talked about having bad drawing days and how he looked at the text and how he would try and find things that weren't in the text to make them funny. And I remember thinking, gosh, you know, that looks, really, that, that looks like good fun to do. So he was probably a bit of an inspiration, I think. Um, anyway. uh, hold on. My brother absolutely like loves reading the Tom Gates books, hey. and I sometimes, I sometimes read them with him like in the middle of the night, and I'm like, oh yeah, that's pretty cool. And I think Delia, that's a relief. <laughs> I'm a teenager myself, and I think he relates me a lot to Delia because I'm really grumpy. Oh, would, would, would she always like really grumpy? Is she like? Well, she's kind of. I mean, you know, there is that little bit of sort of sibling relationship where. She is kind of sort of grumpy, and he's a little bit of an irritant. And that is a little bit based on the relationship that I had. I've got um, two sisters and a brother, and they're much older than me. Um, I'll show you this. So I want to swap over again, right? This is one of my favourite books that I had when I was little, a bit younger. This one, you probably won't remember. All the children won't remember, but there was this series on TV. This is really dating me now, called... Um, oh, no, it was The Singing Ringing Tree. <laughs> it was really odd, but this book was a bit like that, and me and my sister had an argument about something, and she took my book. Now, don't do this. I'm not encouraging people to do this. Okay, so yeah, this is my favourite book. And look what she did. Can you see? <laughs> she went through the whole book and drew moustaches <laughs> on every single page. And this is the worst one. This is the one that really upset me. Like that, that, look. 
even on mum. <laughs> and there. So the whole book is just cool. But I've kept things like that because that's the kind of thing that I would probably, I wouldn't encourage drawing on books. But, you know, you get that kind of thing, though. What do you think your next book would be called? Ah, oh, well, I have the title of my next book already, but it's in here, and I said, Sam, my editor, is sitting here, and I think if I told you, she'd rugby tackle me to the ground and say, you're not allowed to say anything, but I can tell you, I'll show you what I'm working on next. Sorry if you're still drawing, but I'm literally doing, I'm doing this next. Hooray! <laughs> it's a Tom Gates, oh, hang on. Come on. <laughs> I'll go back to the other one. But anyway, I'm doing a Tom Gates annual next, and it's going to have, there you go, so it's got all the things that I can't put into the books in the small, because there's lots of creative things in there. We've added lots of extra stories and things to make and different, you know, all sorts of different things. So that's going to be quite fun. And that should be out in August, I think, the end of August, if I get my act together. <laughs> Anyone else got any questions? We've got about three minutes left. How, how old were you when you started your first book? Well, my first book I did in 2005. And um, well, this is what I have to... <laughs> If I whisper, okay, I'm 50, I'm 50 now, so work, work that out. <laughs> um, in the book that you wrote called Extra Special Treats, yeah. did you draw the book gate? Did you draw the um, snakes and ladders on the first page? I did, yeah, and that's what I mean. I'm having so much fun because I'm literally just sort of thinking of things that I would have liked. And when they said to me, when the publisher said, oh, you can have a hardback book for this one, because all the others have been, you know, like softback books, and I thought, oh, a hardback book, what can I do with a hardback book? So I thought immediately, let's make it a board game. So that's what I got to do. So, yeah, so I did the two different games, front and back. And if you, if you didn't buy the hardback for, the, for extra spe special treats, that's one of the things that's going in the annual, so we can have a nice big board game. Anyone else got any questions? What was the first book you wrote called? The first book, well, the first picture was called Square-Eyed Pat, and then I wrote another one afterwards called My Big Brother Boris, and that was all about a crocodile, a little croc, who um, his brother ends up getting a snout ring, I think. <laughs> Anyone else got any questions? What's your favourite out of the Beano or the Dandy? Oh, <laughs> oh that's a tough one. I, I really like both, but I have got a very soft spot for the Beano, definitely. Right, two minutes there. Has anyone got any questions then? Oh, everyone's going, don't go. <laughs> what made you come up with the name Tom Gates? Oh, that's a really good question. Well, I just, when I drew the character, I kind of think he looks a bit like a Tom, doesn't he? Do you think? He just sort of looks like Tom, and I wanted a short, snappy name. And people often ask me why I wrote as a boy. And the truth is that actually girls will read books about boys, but sometimes boys don't always read books about girls. And actually, if in the books, I, you know, I don't think it matters. The sort of things that I'm writing about, both boys and girls really like. Um, so there just happened to be quite a lot on the radio and in the newspapers at the time about somebody called Bill Gates. <laughs> And I kind of thought, well, he's done okay. <laughs> so, you know, and actually I thought Tom Gates, it kind of, they just went together, really. Anyone else? I've got one, one minute late. Were What's you your... a big reader when you were younger? What did I? Did you like reading when you were younger? I did. I really liked reading. I, like, I used to read, but a book for me had to be something. It had to grab my attention pretty quickly. And so I either had to know about it a bit a little bit. So if I was reading and it didn't grab my attention in the first few pages, my concentration wasn't great. And that's one of the reasons that I decided to put lots of drawings and doodles in the books, because I used to do picture books, I think very visually. So I think it adds to the story and it gets you in there really quickly. There's somebody down here. I'm going to take this question down here. It's all right. So I'm making you really work, you two. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Up the back now. <laughs> How did you get your Blue Peter badge? Oh, I know. I wear my Blue Peter badge with pride. Well, that was because Extra Special Treats actually uh, won the Blue Peter Book Award. So, way. That's, that's all thanks to you. So thank you. Right, we've got a few seconds remaining. Can I just say thank you so much? You've been absolutely brilliant. I hope I've given you some inspiration to go away, do some drawing and doodling, write your own stories. So give yourselves a round of applause. Way. Hey, well done. Thank you. And I'll be signing. I'll be signing back the tent. So if you've got any other questions, come and see me. See you later. Bye.
more. Thank you. Bye. <laughs>